Hi! In this video, we'll discover how many prophecies were fulfilled at the event of the birth of Jesus Christ. Give it a try. What do you think is the number of the fulfilled prophecies? I can't reveal the number right now, but I can only tell you it is a surprisingly large number. The birth of Jesus Christ is unique in all history because so many prophecies from the Old Testament were fulfilled at the birth of Jesus Christ, prophecies written with hundreds and even with thousands of years before. How many prophecies were fulfilled at your birth? Or choose any personality from all history and ask yourself how many prophecies were fulfilled at her birth? First of all, we have to understand that the prophetic language of the Old Testament is very complex. There are many types of prophecies. Let us find out three main types. The first type, explicit prophecies. They are prophecies that announce directly a certain event. For example, the exact geographical location of the birth of the Messiah. This is Bethlehem. The second type, prophetic patterns. We have here, as an example, Herod's tragic genocide against children. We remember that Moses was born in a similar context when Pharaoh initiated a similar genocide against children. Now, the Messiah was announced to be a prophet like Moses, so he fulfilled this Prophetic pattern from the life of Moses too. The third type, prophetic images. For example, Jesus was born in a wooden manger surrounded by animals. But this is a prophetic image that reminds us of the wooden ark of Noah. And inside we find out there Noah and his small family and some animals and there they were bearing the seed of life, the messianic seed that would bring hope and a new beginning for the whole world. We will not have the time to explain and argue each prophecy individually, but we will just list them to find out the total number of prophecies fulfilled by the event of the birth of Jesus Christ. Each detail from the birth of Jesus Christ has a specific role to fulfill the prophecies from the Old Testament. We have prophecies about the identity of the Messiah being fulfilled. Here we have Jesus was son of Abraham. He was son of David. He was born from a virgin, as the Old Testament announced. And in the same time, he was born from a virgin because he had to be both human and both divine, as the prophecies announced all of this. And of course, he was from a poor family because the Messiah, at least in the first part of his ministry, had to be humble and had to have a lack of shine. The names are not accidentally but they embody prophetic images. Of course, we have the name Jesus. This is the Hebrew meaning of the name Joshua. And of course, Joshua is the Savior, is a messianic figure from the Old Testament. And through Joshua, God fulfilled his promises, the promises he could not fulfill through Moses. Then we have the father of Jesus, Joseph. Why Joseph? Because this remembers us about the Joseph from the book of Genesis, which in a similar way, guided by God through dreams, had the role to protect the seed of Jacob, uh, the family of Jacob, and of course the messianic seed. And we have Mary, the mother of Jesus. Why Mary? Mary in Hebrew is Miriam, and we remember Moses' sister, who, through her courage and faith, protected the little Savior to come. So, in a similar way, Joseph and Miriam from the New Testament, through courage, through faith, through God's guidance, 
managed to protect the little savior, now Messiah himself. The historical context of the birth of the Messiah was announced by the prophets, and these include Israel being in the land of Canaan, Israel being in a state of slavery, Israel as part of the Western world, as it was part of the Roman Empire, and then, of course, the temple, the existence of the temple there at Jerusalem, and then, of course, the exact geographical location at the place of birth, and this is Bethlehem. Herod's genocide is an event that fulfills simultaneously several prophetic patterns. First of all, we remember from the book of Genesis about the war of the serpent against the messianic seed. And we see in all the history from the Old Testament the devil trying to kill the physical messianic seed. And then we spoke about Moses, who was born in a similar context, and the Messiah had to be a prophet like Moses. And then we remember the prophecy from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 15, a prophecy quoted by Matthew in his Gospel. We had then some details from the birth of Jesus that already begin to fulfill some series of prophecies announcing that the Messiah would be rejected. Of course, he was born during night. There was no room for, for him, just a humble manger. And what is very important, and then we have the religious authorities of Israel who ignore the Magi, and they did not go there to Bethlehem to welcome the king. And now about the shepherds. I like very much this section about the shepherds. The question we have to ask ourselves is this. Why the angels did not announce the whole people of Israel, or at least the religious authorities of Israel, to come there at Bethlehem to welcome the king? Why they announced only these poor shepherds to come there at Bethlehem? Of course, they announced only the shepherds so only a remnant of the people of Israel would recognize the Messiah and not the whole people. The shepherds, this means the marginals and not the religious authorities, would recognize the Messiah. And then, of course, uh, the prophecies announced that the spiritual shepherds, the spiritual uh, authorities of Israel would be replaced with new shepherds, with new spiritual authorities, when the Messiah would come. The Magi fulfill at least three prophecies. First of all, we remember Jeremiah, a messianic figure from the Old Testament. When Jeremiah was rejected and imprisoned by the people of Israel, the Gentiles came and delivered him, and the Gentiles brought to him gifts, gifts from the East, gifts from Babylon. And then we remember those prophecies that announced that not the people of Israel, but the Gentiles would be more receptive to the message of the Messiah. And of course, we have the star. The star remembers us about a messianic image from the Old Testament, and this is the star of Jacob from Numbers 24, verse 17. The flee of Jesus and his parents to Egypt also fulfills a series of prophecies. And we have here, we have the prophecy from Hosea chapter 11, verse 1, quoted by Matthew in his Gospel. And then we remember the messianic pattern from the book of Genesis, from the history of Joseph. When Joseph was rejected by his brothers, he found protection in Egypt. And then we discover that the Messiah would repeat the historical patterns from the history of Israel. Israel, yes, was uh, for a period in Egypt, and then Israel came back in the land of Canaan. And we see the Messiah repeating this prophetic pattern. Why? Because we have some fabulous prophecies 
from the book of Isaiah that announced that the Messiah would be the true Israel. Indeed, we have, for example, Isaiah 49, verse 3. It announced that Messiah would be called Israel. The Messiah would be the true Israel who would repeat the history of Israel, but remaining in obedience with God and fulfilling the calling of Israel, that of being the light of the whole world. And now it's time for conclusions. The birth of Jesus Christ is unique in all history. We have identified at least 27 prophecies being fulfilled at his birth. And I'm sure there are more. And I'm sure you can discover more. The very event of the birth of Jesus Christ is such a powerful proof that he is the Messiah, the Son of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you came into our world to fulfill all the prophecies and to become the Savior of the whole world.